Does junk ever fall out of the sky from outer space? Yes, it does. And how does it impact aviation? Watch this. Unbelievable. Look at that picture. All that stuff is coming down. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is unbelievable. So this happens down in the Caribbean. It's a long stretch of sky that gets impacted by this. And you're going to see the impact here on, on aviation and what the controllers have to do and what the airplanes have to do. It gets kind of crazy at one point. Stick to the end on this one because uh, there's a lot of little nuances that you want to learn about uh, with this one. But uh, this was a, a star ship uh, that blew up. It was a SpaceX airplane, or a, not airplane, spaceship that blew up and just spreads all over from basically Miami all the way to San Juan. Aircraft due to a space vehicle mishap of the debris response area has been activated beginning south of Georgetown. Great Exuma and extending to the southeast impacting Providencialis and Grand Turk areas. Extending further beyond and ending at the San Juan and Piarco Oceanic FIR boundary, just north of St. Martin, and stand by for individuals. That's hundreds of miles long and probably 100 miles wide. Huge area. You can see it here on the screen. This whole long area, maybe even a thousand miles. That's just Expect, huge. Uh, holding um, due to uh, a debris field, a debris field that just has been activated from a rocket launch mishap. Okay, so this whole long area, everybody's got to clear. Uh, COVID, uh, expecting holding to lot 6139. Okay, lot 6139, foreign carrier now, uh, is repeating back. We're going to expect holding. Now, the first thing that goes through a pilot's mind is how long a holding. All right, because I got to watch my fuel and I got to make sure I can make it my destination. If I can't, I have to figure out a divert field. When you've got a long stretch of space that's been blocked off like this, airspace, you got to think about that right up front because you might have to go some distance uh, to get away from this and to land, and you don't want to run out of fuel. And the fleet say again, the reason of holding. Okay, why are we doing this? You can expect holding over position bank. That's Tango Hotel Alpha November Kilo. Okay, that wasn't the question. He said, why are we holding, not where are we holding? Again, this is the archaic talking on the radios and the scratchiness and the miscommunication that goes on. I recently did a video uh, where I talked about four things that the FAA and uh, Congress could change right now. And one of them is updating the system, spending the money in the FAA fund uh, to put CPDLC in place, which is controller pilot data link communication. That would have helped right here, right? There's a link in the end screen to that video. Can you say expected holding time? How long? Expected right? holding time, uh, I would probably say for the next, uh, let's see, uh, seven, zero minutes. And that's due to that's a, a rocket time. launch mishap. So the, the debris is falling from the sky, and there is an area that's protected for the debris to fall, and you are just north of that area. So that's why I'm holding you. Okay, so this guy is explaining in detail. He's a little, a little attitude in his voice. Uh, but again, many times the controllers are reluctant to give you an exact time. And the reason is because it might be a lot less than that. It might be longer than that. The procedure that's in place whenever there's holding is they are supposed to uh, legally give you an expect further clearance time. He's eventually going to get around to that. This guy's asking him just how long in general. So they don't want to speculate and expect further clearance time. Then you can do the math and figure out how long it's going to be. Expect means just that. Expect. It may be longer. It may be shorter. We'll see how this works out. But the police uh, uh, expect estimated uh, holding time. So in that whole long thing from ATC, he missed the 70 minutes. All right. Stand by. All right. Now he's saying what I'm saying. Yeah, my, my question is about the fuel, sir. Yeah. Okay, now, the air traffic controller knows that. He knows when there's a long hold time, every airplane he's working is going to be concerned about fuel. So he could help out here a little bit by saying, hey, guys, this is going to be a lengthy delay. I don't know exactly how long, but let me just reiterate again, about an hour or more, I think. I'll give you an update on that. But he's reluctant to do that. And now all of this 
communication back and forth. Of course, the pilots are going to be concerned about fuel, right? Air traffic controllers need to think more like pilots. Pilots need to think more like air traffic controllers. I ne never understood the disconnect here. Uh, space vehicle mess up. A debris response error has been activated beginning south of Georgetown Grace, soon and extended to the southeast. We've been told this already. Uh, Extending further beyond and ending at the San Juan and Pierco FIR boundary just north of St. Martin. Stand by for individual construction. Pilots will be getting charts out and they'll be mapping that on their chart so they know exactly where the area is. Single Hotel Alpha November Kilo. Hold north of Bank. Legs and turns your discretion. And maintain flight level 400, spec clearance 0115, Zulu, turn now 2358. Okay, that's the official holding instructions. They include a point to hold. They include the expect further clearance time, always in Zulu time, right? What is Zulu time? It's Greenwich Mean Time. It's the it's a line right through the middle of England, and every uh, airplane on the planet uses Zulu time, so we're not talking about local and where am, am I. Zulu time is the time, and then the expect further clearance and uh, altitude and what direction the hold is going to be in. So he's given them all those instructions now. It's official. And to call the cut, thanks uh, on our discretion and expect uh, zero one one five uh, Zulu, lot uh, six one three nine. Now I guarantee you the captain on lot right now is going zero one one five. That's like over an hour from now. He wants to, he, it's going to take a minute to register and then he's going to, he's probably going to call back. Let's see. I would. Sentinel aircraft, due to a space vehicle mishap, a debris response area has been activated within the vicinity of warning areas 174 Alpha and 174 Bravo. Stand by for this additional. Those are positions on a chart that people can see, so they'll know exactly where the debris field is. Sunwing 5417 affirmative, a de debris response area has been activated for a uh, space. Everybody's verifying now. What is it? Center again, lot six one three nine. So six one three nine. Here he calls back. Right? I knew it. Sure, sir. The time zero one one five Zulu. It is the time to leave our holding, or is it the time of opening Punta Cana Airport? Okay, so he's he's like, okay, is that am I going to have to hold that whole time and then go to the airport? Or is that the time that they're going to open the airport and I can be there? Okay, very important distinction. That, that's the time for your further, further clearance. clearance. You'll be holding until that time and let something change before then. Right. And he should know so that. We leave our holding time. We will leave our holding at 0115. Yeah? Only if you have to go there. We'll be holding until the area goes inactive, until the area is cold. That's just an estimate, last 6139. Right. And this captain should know that. And that's uh, just the back area, the uh, debris area, it goes, I mean, probably six, 700 miles to the northwest of you and all the way another 500 miles uh, to the southeast. So basically 24 degrees north. That's if you're a curious, huge there area. There's no way to get across that until they release it. Flexjet 55, you have time for a question? So Flexjet now is thinking, where am I going to go? Hey, go ahead. Right? Yeah, what our best option is going to be here in a bit. Can you give us the coordinates on that uh, debris field again? Probably not. 558. It's at your... Uh, let's see. Looking out. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock and 104 miles is when it starts. And it extends... And it extends to the south 95 miles. 95 miles beyond it. So, like I said, it's about right, 100 miles wide. Now we're on the turn, so is that the... Can you tell us the direction is at uh, like 210 degrees. Mm, he's looking at the scope. 180 heading, and um, there's there's really no way around it. It uh, goes through a whole airspace, so the only way to progress through it would be at your own risk, and you would have to declare an emergency. <laughs> In order to get to San Juan or to Juliana, we have to fly through it. That's correct. Okay. Correct. We're not going to do that. There's a lot again. 6139, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. And last 6139? Uh, about the uh, um, airport, Tango, Juliet, Sierra Juliet, San Juan. That's the same situation. 
Yes, it's the same situation. Same situation. We have no any di divert on the Dominicana and the San Juan as well. The airports are not closed, but in order to get to those airports, you will have to cross through the debris restriction area. So this guy's just looking for his alternatives. He's looking at his fuel. He's looking at the holding time. And basically what this controller is going to tell him is, yeah, those airports are open, but you can't get to them, right? You have to fly through the debris field. And the other guy just said, if you want to declare an emergency and go at your own risk, you can do that. Well, no, nobody's going to do that, right? So here we are. He's just looking for his alternatives. Of airport, any airport which is safe, uh, uh, outside this restriction. Yeah, Lots just doing his homework, figuring out. American 917 uh, request, I need a release to gas or whatever. American 917, the airspace just went cold. Do you want to stay on your previous routing? Okay, airspace just went cold. What does that mean? It means it's opened up again. So this is sometime just a, a little bit longer. There's been a little delay. We cut out a little bit. Affirmative, yeah, electric request, direct to Gaxer, American 917. American 917, approve the request, it's direct Gaxer. They're direct to Gaxer, American Now everything's opening up. Everybody's looking at their fuel and going, yeah, I can make it, I can't make it. Across the debris response area is no longer active. Stand by for individual instructions. Okay, good news. Everybody's wanting to hear that. And look at this. <laughs> That'll get your attention. That's a real deal, and you got to pay attention to that. I've never seen this uh, like this with stuff falling out of the sky. Uh, I did have to divert once for a rocket launch. We were coming by Cape Canaveral, and uh, sometimes they delay the launch. They had delayed the launch a little while. We were right there. They took us out over the ocean while they launched the rocket, and then we were able to come back in. So sometimes you got to be flexible. Well, there you have it. That's what happens when debris falls from the sky. There's a lots of miscommunication and things that go back and forth. But you know what? Everybody clarifies it. ATC clarifies it eventually. The captain asks the right questions. They finally got back and forth, got it all sorted out. And it has a really good outcome at the end of all of this. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.